So, it all comes down to this. The finale. Operator Ori. The modern guy. For hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. The amazing game. Bestowed upon us once again. By our savior. Lord Anton. Peace be upon him. Now I needn't say it. Last video also did pretty well. This has been a very successful series. So we are concluding the main part of the series today. And we shall cover the differences between this modern mode and the other ones. You will find that Operator Ori in the modern era is both the easiest and hardest of the eras presented from the Weeders Through Time section. Here's why. So, of course, our start will be relatively normal, as we will have come to expect by now. You may start with something like a revolver or maybe a pistol now. Sometimes you'll even start with some of the more interesting revolvers, like the ones that have laser sights and such, which is a surprisingly helpful feature, I should mention. And that is one of the more distinct parts about this modern mode, is that attachments now become much more prevalent and much more helpful. As the main thing that makes this both the easiest and hardest mode of the ones that we have gone through is the fact that while the hot dogs have armor now, they almost all have armor, making it the hardest. It's also the easiest because attachments are very prevalent and they, generally speaking, will make life easier for you. You have your red dot sights, lasers, and all that sort of thing, which obviously helps to make life easier. These are often not going to show up a whole lot in the beginning, but it may be worth grabbing a reflex sight of some sort or maybe foregrip if you wanted to. As in the beginning, your points aren't super important, as you'll start off with a kind of decent weapon. Sometimes you'll also get a bolt-action rifle like the AWP. And those aren't too bad, because a lot of them don't start with iron sights, so you'll actually get a free optic out of them. An optic which is actually worth more than the rifle is, as far as supply points go. Of course, melee is still prevalent here, but melee is definitely the least viable it has been throughout these modes, as the armor makes it a little harder to kill them, and they are all going to be armed very well. Didn't stop me from trying to get some smexy kills, though. So then on the second round, you may want to pick yourself up a pistol, and the pistols will consist of even better than what you'd have found in the Cold War, as one may expect. Things like the Desert Eagle will still appear, actually. They are cross-compatible between the two modes. And there's some other ones you will have heard of, like the 5.7, or probably the newly added P22 Six Sig Sauer. These pistols will generally be Kind of like what you experienced during the Cold War One, generally higher cap. Pretty much all 9mm at this point, with a couple 45 exceptions like the USP match. But they'll all be, you know, pistols that you're used to, so it's not so bad.
may also pick up some SMGs where you'll start to see really a lot of familiar things just from other FPSs. You know, you'll have your Victors, uh, there are, I think there's some MP5s that can spawn, and a decent amount of Russian stuff I should add, like the Pepe 2000, which is one of the more interesting ones I think, I quite like that one. Or even some of the more odd ones, like the AEK, I think it's called. I don't remember the numbers, but it's real small, and it's not actually bad. Of course, it is a lot easier to compensate for a bad weapon in this, because you will, generally speaking, find most of your weapons possessing Picatinny rails to put optics or lasers on, so a bad weapon doesn't really matter as much in this mode as it does in the other ones. By the third round, you may start to get an SMG. Or, if you're lucky, you may actually be able to pick up a battle or assault rifle. This will result in your assault or battle rifle starting with a rather low capacity magazine, generally speaking going to be around 10 to 20 rounds. But it's not a bad choice, because at this point in time they'll actually be able to penetrate most types of armor. Of course, not to mention that pretty much every gun will have different varieties of ammo for you to pick up now. So you'll be able to get a pretty good variety of viable things to use. That third round is usually not too hard to pass, considering that there's a wide variety of things you can beat it with, but then you get to the fourth round, and assault rifles and battle rifles start to become very necessary. Now as far as what you'll be seeing for these categories, an assault rifle category is generally going to contain pretty much everything you've seen in modern FPSs. You'll have your M4s, AK-101s, AK-5s even, L85s, G36s, really a lot of stuff that you know and love from all sorts of places. Battle rifles on the other hand is more of a mixed bag I would say, and probably the least reliable that the category has been throughout the series. Because battle rifles will most of the time now contain things like a modernized M14 or a modernized FAL. Now I like the FAL and I accept the M14, but they're really not quite as interesting considering the fact they're the same, just modernized, and generally speaking they're just not quite as flexible. The modern FAL has rails in a lot of places, but it's just not the same as the wooden one. Whereas your assault rifles are going to be very capable of mounting a lot of attachments, and with armor piercing rounds, pretty much all of them can be just as capable of, as a battle rifle, while being more controllable, generally easier to reload, and having a lot more ammo capacity. So I would actually say that the assault rifle is the class that you definitely want to stick with here.
course, you can get to some machine guns, but there's not that big a variety in there. The only one that I'm for sure off the top of my head is there is the M249. And I mean, it's a good one, but a lot of the times it'll just spawn with a Stenag mag, so you might get your M249 and then a 20 round Stenag mag, so it stops becoming a squad automatic and more of a really sad carbine. Things like grenade launchers will become more common as either primary weapons or attachments. You'll find four grips all over the place. Laser sights are actually quite useful. I really like laser sights as it really saves you the time of having to aim, especially with weapons that you don't have a reliable optic for. Though, of course, if you just want to go the optic route, you can find holographic sights, red dots all over the place as they will often show up as the first option in the middle of taking hold supply points, or you'll just get them off a weapon that didn't spawn with iron sights. And that's something I would personally recommend, is that if you're gonna sell off a gun, make sure that if it has an optic, you take it off and put it in your pocket if it's an optic that you like. Especially because spawning something like a scope is kind of unreliable, as one of the things that can spawn is the thing that's just a magnifier. So you may just get a magnifying glass as your optic with no actual reticle. I tried it, it didn't go well. I don't know if I've got that footage or not, but trust me, you may think you can look at the middle, and maybe you can, but accuracy is gonna go out the window. Now in this modern era, while I've mentioned a lot of things that'll seem familiar, there may be some weapons that you haven't really heard of. The Pepe 2000, for example, has only really shown up from what I can remember in one Call of Duty game and then Arma 3's RHS mod, so you may not have heard of it before, and it's a little unconventional, especially given the markings that the Russians use for what's fully automatic and not on their SMGs. So it is definitely good to kind of check in and see what's there, because you'll see some things you know and some things you don't. But there's one of the greatest varieties in this mode, because there's just a lot of different ideas now. At this point in history, we're just kind of trying whatever. There's no real Cold War making us have to mass produce anything, so we just kind of went and did a whole lot of weird stuff, so your experience may vary. But other than that, the main thing that you have to pay attention to that's very specifically different in this mode is, as I mentioned before, pretty much every enemy will have body armor now. And especially once you get to the later rounds, they'll be almost fully encased face masks, helmets. And the only way that you'll be able to reliably damage them, even with assault rifle and even with battle rifle armor piercing rounds, is the little gaps in between their face masks and their necks. And I really don't know if that's working as intended. I would think that an armor-piercing 308 should go through anything that a guy can strap to himself. But I digress. Deal with it. Shoot him in that little gap in the head and you'll make it. It'll just be a lot more chaotic and really the panic of not being able to damage a unit it's almost enjoyable in how scared it makes you, so I would say that it's still not a bad experience, nor necessarily a bad feature, so feel free to see how that goes for you. I just wouldn't bring an SMG. <laughs> Dear God, don't bring an SMG. And this is also another one where I wouldn't really recommend Tracer so much as armor piercing is very important, even if on the very, very high tier guys the armor piercing won't work as well it's very effective against pretty much all the rest. Aside from that, better keep up with your reload skills because there's no time for that here, especially given that I would say you're probably going to be releasing the highest volume of fire given their armor. You're really going to be reloading a lot, especially since, as I said with the assault and battle rifles, you may be getting low cap magazines. So practice those reloads. Here's my finest shining examples because I obviously wasn't going to finish this episode without a reload comp.
But now you know how to be the most tactical operator in the game of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades blessed upon us by our savior, Lord Anton. Peace be upon him. It's a good one. It's not my favorite. It is not my favorite, but it's a great mode, and it's very different from the others, which I think makes it its own kind of distinct thing and worth playing. It's probably one of the ones that I won the most, and that's just because it is also the most similar to the base mode. So if you want to transfer over to just some of the era ones, it is the easiest to get directly into as it is the most similar. Now, as far as what I'm going to do next, I may do the western one because I skipped it, mostly because I don't know anything about it, so I don't know what I would talk about. But if you want me to do it, I'll do it, or I'll do some of the other H3 VR taken hold modes. Maybe I'll do some other scene entirely, maybe some other game. If you want me to do something, let me know. I read every comment, and I always appreciate them. The positive ones really do brighten my day. So, thank you so much for watching this video, and by extent, this series. And I hope I will see you again soon. Das Vidania.